The installation definitely grew out of quite a personal expression. Fascinations that I express in my work, I wanted to express in the installation as well. And the collaborative aspect in my work was really important to also embed in this project. The first window that I worked on was actually with a good friend of mine, Ikeline Stange. I 3D scanned her while sleeping. And it's being made in a very hyper-real style, so it'll feel almost like she's real and breathing when you walk past. I found some amazing artists, Tristan who works under the name Scooney and Walter Adam Casotto who are doing an exceptional job on it. It's four metres altogether in length of the neck. A giant, lifelike, hyper-realistic head, perfectly recreated. It's a longer process if you want to get to that point where it looks very realistic. I also work in the film industry as a prosthetic makeup artist. That's where I got expertise from. We replicate uh, creatures we do fake bodies. We choose to use silicone to make the skin because it has to look translucent like a real skin. You have to put a lot of details into the sculpture. So even the really fine skin pores and texture. We're literally gonna punch every single hair into this silicone skin. So it's gonna look like the hair is growing from the skin. The second window is a incredible glass mask being made by Bernd Weinmeier in Austria. And he's making a very, very detailed interpretation of a mask that Iris designed. I again went to the 3D scan of Ikelina. We took the bone structure of her face and then started connecting the lines of the dots in quite a chaotic pattern and made that into a glass mask. They sent me a three-dimensional mask and for me then it's very easy to bring it in the bigger scale. I'm a flame worker. That means uh, blowing glass with a torch. When it's fluid, it's like honey. It's more easy to work precise. The rod connection technique itself, you have to connect rod by rod and you have to weld it that there is no sharp corner. So each connection has to be round, melted. I think 3,000 rod loops are connected together to one big face. Annealing means to, to bring out tensions in the glass by heat. So when you heat it up to 540 degrees and you keep it on that temperature, it should be soft enough that the tensions can come out from the glass. There's two installations that we made dresses for. One of the dresses is inspired by cymatics, which means the visualization of sound. So I looked at the patterns that are made visible through sound waves. I took those patterns and printed it on transparent organza and then plissed it. And on the third side, there's another dress which will be Again, choreographed with wind, but this one will have small dots which float as well, which mirror the dress. In the final window, there's three spinners which you can look up on, and these will be moving, and as they move, there's an image on each side. Which is a collaboration with two photographers that I work with a lot, called Juan Dupuis and Nick Thornton Jones. They made really beautiful photos from the Sayaku collection. 
And by the movement of the spinners, you will see different images evolve. But everything, her approach is very experimental. Mm -hmm. So I think people would recognize that, that she's not a fashion designer who provides us with glamour. Behind there is a deep meaning. We love that uh, as Swarovski, and I think also the visitors will recognize that. Normally when I design, I work for the one way and I work on my collections. And this was quite a new space for me to be in. I think one thread throughout the whole exhibition is femininity. Of course, that's the canvas to all of my work as a design for women. It's more re-sculpting femininity. That process, both with collaborative artists, lucid dreaming, nature, and the freedom that Swarovski gave me were my guiding lines in all of the pieces.